Hi, good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television. The perfect show to kick start your day, bringing you the top national, international sports and business news. Let us start with the headlines. Cabinet nod to the new pension plan. 55 lakh central government employees to benefit. Nod to national steel policy target to achieve 300 million ton capacity by 2030. Pakistan's denial of a mutilation of soldiers' bodies has no credibility. Defence Minister says Pakistani military was involved in the barbaric act. Four-day meet of heads of Indian missions abroad. Relations with Pakistan, China and US to be discussed. 120 top Indian diplomats abroad to attend. Political crisis in Venezuela deepens so one dead as the protesters clash with the police. Against President Maduro's move to rewrite the constitution. And India beat Japan 4-3 in the round-robin match in Sultan Aslan Shah hockey tournament in Malaysia. Brighten chances of reaching the final. Our top story this morning, uh, Defence Minister Arun Jaitley has rejected Pakistani claim that it did not mutilate the bodies of two Indian soldiers along the line of control. He said that the claim is without any credibility. Jaitley said that the barbaric act uh, could not have been carried out without the involvement of the Pakistani military. The fact that cover firings are provided... Uh To those who carry out this act, they are helped to escape on such a heavily guarded border where posts are within few meters of each other. This can't happen without the protection of the or the participation or the actual indulgence of the army itself. Well, India has unequivocally told Pakistan to punish its uh, soldiers and commanders who are responsible for the mutilation of two martyred Indian soldiers. Pakistan was uh, also told that the blood uh, clearly points to its side of the border or in the attack. Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar on Wednesday summoned Pakistan's High Commissioner Abdul Basit to convey India's stern message to Pakistan. Basit was told that India has enough evidence to prove that it was indeed Pakistani soldiers who were involved in mutilating the bodies of soldiers of another country. Yeah, India has asked Pakistan to punish the soldiers and commanders responsible for the act. I can tell you that uh, the Foreign Secretary mentioned to the High Commissioner of Pakistan that uh, we hope that as the High Commissioner of Pakistan, he would uh, convey to his government the sense of outrage uh, that that exists in India on this particular incident, uh, on this barbaric act. And, uh, well, his response was that he, of course, uh, denied that Pakistan army was involved in, the, uh, in, in any way in this incident, but assured that he will convey the contents of our demarche. In addition to evidence about the movement of Pakistani BAT soldiers, India said that there are enough indications to show that the blood trail leads to Pakistan. The Pakistani High Commissioner, however, denied any involvement in his country in the incident but promised to pass India's outreach to his government. Blood samples of the Indian soldiers that have been collected and the trail of blood on the Rosanala line clearly shows that the killers returned across the line of control. So this answers the part about the evidence, uh, what, what actionable evidence we have right now, the information that we have provided to Pakistan. We have shared this already with the Pakistan High Commissioner. The Indian side has sufficient evidence that this act was committed by personnel of the Pakistan Army who crossed the line of control in the Krishna Ghati sector. The government also demanded that Pakistan take immediate action against its soldiers and commanders responsible for this heinous act. The External Affairs Ministry has expressed great dissatisfaction about Pakistan's behaviour on the border it has shared Pakistan's activities with many countries in the past, but there has been little impact on Pakistan's behaviour. Meanwhile, India turned back around 40 students who had come to India under an NGO initiative. The external 
Defense Ministry spokesperson said the present situation is such that any efforts to normalize situation either on the border or elsewhere is not possible. It stated that even people-to-people -people contacts are not possible in this situation. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the Pakistan Maritime Security Agency has apprehended 30 fishermen and has seized five boats off the Gujarat coast. The captured fishermen were apprehended on Wednesday near the international maritime borderline in the Arabian Sea off the Gujarat coast. The detained fishermen and their boats have been taken to Karachi. Last month on 9th of April, Pakistan had captured 42 Indian fishermen with their seven fishing boats. The boats belonged to Porbandar, Oka and Mangrol. Since the beginning of this year, Pakistan Maritime Security Agency has detained around 400 fishermen and seized at least 70 fishing trawlers, all from Gujarat in the Arabian Sea. And in related news, a four-day meet of Indian missions abroad will begin today in the national capital. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is likely to address one of the sessions at the conferences that is being organized by the External Affairs Ministry every year. Now, India's ties with its neighbours, including Pakistan and its relationship with the Trump administration, as well as China, are expected to figure during the meet. The meeting will be attended by around 120 top Indian diplomats posted abroad. The meeting is happening in the backdrop of a worsening relations with Pakistan after the beheading of two Indian soldiers along the line of control. India's ties with the resource-rich African continent as well as with the Gulf countries as well as the situation in the Middle East are expected to be discussed during the meeting. On to some other news, the Union Cabinet has approved a modification in the method for the revision of pension of pre-2016 pensioners and the family pensioners which will provide additional benefit to the pensioners. The modification will benefit over 55 lakh pre-2016 civil and defence pensioners as well as family pensioners. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley also said that the Cabinet has also approved the retention of percentage-based disability pension for defence personnel in the place of a slab-based system which was recommended by the 7th uh, CPC. Now, with this modification, the annual pension bill of the central government is likely to be 1.76 lakh crore rupees. एक प्री 2016 के जो पेंशनर्स हैं, उनको दो ऑप्शंस दिए जा रहे हैं। एक 2.57 के मल्टीप्लायर के बेस पे ले लें पेंशन, या फिर एक वैकल्पिक इसमें थोड़ा सा पेक अमिशन से अलग गए हैं। पे कमीशन ने एक इंक्रीमेंटल मेथड सेकंड ऑप्शन दिया था, वो अनवर्कबल बन रहा था। तो एक पे कमीशन, पे फिक्सेशन का एक फॉर्मूला पेंशन कमेटी ने दिया है। इन दोनों में से जो भी फेवरेबल होगा, दोनों ऑप्शंस रिटायरीज के पास अवेलेबल होंगी। कुछ प्रमुख चेंजेस हैं, विशेष रूप से तीन चेंजेस। to the benefit of the services pay commission ki recommendations ke sambandh mein unme se teen aise concerns hain jo sarkar ne swikar kiye hain do aaj ki cabinet mein the aur ek cabinet ke baad executive decision se swikar kiya hai and the government will uh, shortly come out with an ordinance to empower the Reserve Bank to effectively deal with the problem of mounting bad loans in the banking sector. Now, PTI is quoting sources as saying as a, that a proposal to amend Section 35A of the Banking Regulation Act through the ordinance route was approved by the Cabinet, headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The amendment uh, will empower the RBI to issue direction to the banks to recover non-performing assets or the NPAs from loan defaulters. Now, public sector banks are uh, saddled with the non-performing assets or bad loans to a tune of a staggering 6 lakh crore rupees. The amended law will also empower the RBI to set up uh, oversight uh, panels that will shield the bankers from later action by probe agencies that are looking into loan recasts. And um, among other decisions, the Union Cabinet on Wednesday also approved a policy for providing re preference to the domestically manufactured iron and steel products on government procurement. 
Now, this policy seeks to accomplish the Prime Minister's vision of Make in India. The policy is applicable on all the government tenders where price bid is yet to be opened. The policy provides a minimum value addition of 15% in the notified steel products which are covered under the preferential procurement. In case any manufacturer is aggrieved, a grievance redressal committee is set up under the Ministry of Steel shall dispose of the complaint in a time-bound manner in four weeks. National Steel Policy 2017 approved the Mantri Parishad. Its purpose is to make a globally competitive steel industry in a world where we have made 2030 तक स्टील का पर कैपिटा कंजम्पशन 160 किलोग्राम हो। And to get more on this, let's go across to my colleague Vishal Daya, who is joining us live from the national capital. Vishal, very good morning. Cabinet to nod to a new pension plan, a national steel policy, as well as a Vijayawada International Airport. Also, central sector scheme for the agro-marine processing. Number of key decisions are being taken by the government. Well, yes, uh, Aishwarya, good morning. Uh, quite a number of uh, important decisions which were taken by uh, the cabinet yesterday. And as you pointed out, uh, uh, you know, uh, just uh, in, in tune with uh, uh, the uh, national policies on several sectors uh, which uh, the NDA government has been approving in uh, uh, different cabinet meets yesterday, also uh, the national steel policy was approved. And uh, it is more or less uh, aimed at uh, helping the domestic steel producers, uh, improving the situation of uh, uh, the Indian steel industry ensuring that it uh, uh, you know um, uh, gets uh, uh, international status uh, uh, that's 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 one of the aims apart from that uh, the two other important decisions which you mentioned earlier are really really uh, uh, you know uh, 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 the decisions which were being looked forward to one is uh, with respect to the ordinance which has been approved by the cabinet uh, there is no official announcement yet and the reason behind that is that uh, the ordinance uh, uh, is only uh, made uh, official only after it has been signed by the president so it has been sent to the president uh, and uh, this ordinance deals with uh, mm -hmm. uh, the problem of uh, bad loans, uh, loans uh, which uh, the PSU banks are uh, uh, sorted with as of now. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's, it's more than 6 lakh crore, that's what mm -hmm. the figure is. Now what the government plans to do through this ordinance is amend the banking regulation. And this amendment uh, will give more powers to the Reserve Bank of India to issue directives to the PSU banks to tackle such bad loans, uh, yes. to take effective measures and actions against defaulters. Uh, this is something which the government believes uh, is going to you know, uh, be a very important step in tackling the issue of uh, bad loans. Now, uh, the other decision with respect to the uh, recommendations of the Seventh Pay Commission is something uh, which falls short of the expectations of uh, uh, the uh, the central government employees. What uh, uh, the employees uh, would uh, have been waiting for was uh, uh, the recommendations of the Lavasa Committee, which was set up on the allowances to be taken into consideration and approved. But uh, that, uh, for that, uh, it seems uh, the, um, uh, the central government employees will have to wait a bit longer because mm -hmm. that committee report uh, will now uh, go uh, to the uh, joint committee of uh, uh, the empowered joint committee of secretaries. All and right. once uh, uh, the empowered joint committee of secretaries has given its approval to that, then it will be put before uh, uh, the cabinet for its approval. So it might be a few weeks more before uh, uh, you know a final decision on that comes. But uh, uh, yesterday's decision with respect to the seventh pay commission recommendations deals with pensioners, and that should yes. come as a, a sort of a relief to the pensioners who will get now uh, options to go ahead and exercise as far as uh, uh, investing or getting their pensions are concerned. All right, uh, Vichal, thank you so much uh, for all those updates there. And in our news on the presidential uh, elections, well, Congress President Sonia Gandhi held a talks with the National Conference uh, Working President Omar Abdullah in the national capital over forging opposition unity for a joint presidential candidate. Well, the Congress uh, President will also be holding talks with West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee, BSP Supremo Mayawati and DMK leader MK Stalin soon. The meetings are expected to be held over a week or 10 days. Now, she has already held talks with Nitish Kumar, Sharad Yadav, Sharad Pawar, and left leaders Sitaram Yechuri as well as D. Raja. She has a se separately held a telephonic conversation with Mulayam Singh Yadav as well as Lalu Prasad. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi also held consultations with uh, Sharad Babar, Sitaram Yechuri, and Akhilesh Yadav.
Now, the sudden flurry of uh, activities uh, by the opposition to forge a strong alliance in the presidential election comes after a string of victories for the BJP in state assembly polls as well as municipal elections. Now, some feel that the united face of the opposition for the presidential poll uh, may well turn out to be a precursor to an anti-NDA front ahead of the 2019 Lok Sabha election. The presidential election has to be held before 24th of July when incumbent President Mukherjee's term ends. And time now for a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. Stay tuned. Farmer suicide is happening because of distress sale of his produce. we need to do is probably increase the number of food processing facilities, industries near the production sites. The farmer can keep the harvested tomato for one month. He will get at least four times the price that he will be getting at the time of harvest. He will be really actually rich. Watch Eureka with Dr. K. Alagusundaram, Deputy Director General, Agricultural Engineering Department, ICAR, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Harappan sites are a treasure trove of sophisticated pottery. These creations show tremendous advances by the potter's wheel. Creations like the perforated jar, the copper axe, the drizzle and knives astound even present-day archaeologists. Figurines depicting yoga poses, chess pieces display a complexity unsurpassed even by later-day civilizations, all of which make the Harappan civilization truly unique. Thanks for staying with us. A big story coming in from Maharashtra where one policeman has been killed and 11 injured after a mine-protected vehicle of the C-60 commandos came under a landmine attack in Gachiroli district in Maharashtra. An official said that the incident took place in the evening on Wednesday near Bhamragarh in the district when a patrol party of the C-60 commandos was crossing the area. The team of security force personnel had been conducting operations in the area. Earlier in the day, a CRPF Jawan and two Maharashtra police uh, personnel were injured in an exchange of fire with the Naxals. News from further down south and jailed AIA DMK leader VK Sasikala has now moved the Supreme Court seeking re-examination of its verdict or holding her guilty and sentencing her to a four-year imprisonment in a graft case. Now, the review petition has been filed by Sasikala and two others. It has also challenged the setting aside of Karnataka High Court verdict, acquitting her and restoring uh, the trial court verdict in Toto. Former Tamil Nadu Chief uh, Minister Late J. Jalalitha was also an accused in the case. The trial court in Bangalore had convicted Sasikala along with Jalalitha and two others in the case for amassing assets disproportionate to their source of income. Now to some other news, now Home Secretaries of India and the UK will be meeting in New Delhi today. Well, India will uh, press for the early extradition of fugitive businessman Vijay Malia from the United Kingdom during the meeting. Now, Union Home Secretary Rajiv uh, Mehrishi will raise the issue when he meets uh, his uh, UK counterpart uh, Patsy Williamson, the second uh, permanent secretary in the British uh, Home Office. The counter-terror cooperation between India and the UK, besides a host of other issues, will also figure in the meeting. Issues related to mutual legal assistance treaties, strengthening of uh, intelligence sharing mechanism and visa related issues will also be deliberated upon. Let's get you some international news now. Well, there is no end to the political crisis in Venezuela. One person died as protesters clashed with the police on Wednesday. At a march by protesters towards the parliament in the capital, Caracas, Masked youths uh, hurled rocks and uh, fire bombs at the police. The security personnel responded by using rubber bullets and water cannons. A teenager protester died in the resulting clashes. The demonstrators have been carrying out anti-government protests for a month now. 
demanding uh, President uh, Nicolas uh, Maduro to step down. Now, they're especially angry over Maduro's move to create a new constituent body to rewrite the constitution. More than uh, 30 people have been killed and hundreds either injured or arrested since uh, protesters took to the streets in early April. Now, ever since uh, President Maduro came to power in 2013, Venezuelan economy is in a bad shape. There have been shortages of uh, food, baby milk, medicine and other basics. 158 de la Federación y 18 de la Revolución Bolivariana. Firmo como vamos a elegir libremente a través del voto universal directo y secreto una poderosa Asamblea Nacional Constitucional. Los venezolanos no vamos a caer en la trampa, no nos vamos a dejar. Desconocemos esta constituyente comunal, el pueblo está en la calle. News from France now, where uh, Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel uh, Macron, uh, the two contenders uh, for the French presidency on Wednesday, traded insults in a crucial TV debate ahead of the polls on Sunday. The two and a half hours debate was uh, heated for most of its time, with both the candidates throwing personal in insults at each other. A centrist, Emmanuel Macron said that his rival Marine Le Pen's strategy is to lie, while she called him a shameless darling of the system. The two leaders logged horns on a number of issues, including economy, employment, terrorism, EU, currency, as well as education. Macron and Le Pen of uh, the far-right uh, Front National go head-to-head -head before Sunday's the decisive second-round vote to choose uh, France's next president. Macron is well ahead in the polls, although his lead now has been reduced. For the first time, neither candidate is from a mainstream French party. de la précarité, de la brutalité sociale, de la guerre de tous contre tous, euh, de, euh, du saccage euh, économique notamment euh, de nos grands groupes, euh, du dépeçage de la France par euh, les grands intérêts économiques, du communautarisme. La division, la guerre civile que vous portez dans le pays, lutter contre les terroristes, ça n'est en aucun cas céder à leur piège, le piège de la guerre civile, celui qu'ils nous tendent, celui que vous portez en divisant les Français, en insultant les Françaises et les Français à cause and on to sports now, top seed uh, Vikas uh, Krishnan in 75 kilogram category and fourth seed uh, Shiv Thapa in the 60 kilogram category were among four Indian boxers who have qualified for the World Championships on Wednesday and assured themselves of medals by advancing to the Asian Championships semi-finals. While it was a third successive medal assured at the event for Shiv Thapa, Vikas Krishnan secured a second successive uh, win for himself. Shiva had won a gold at the 2013 edition and, it, and he followed it up with a bronze in 2015. Also, Sumit Sangwan and Amit Fungal were, were on the other, were rather the other two Indian boxers who took uh, medals as well at the World Championship. Asian Championship is a qualifier for the upcoming World Championships in Germany. Top six in each of the ten weight categories in this tournament will make the cut for the big event. News uh, from uh, hockey and after losing a match against Australia, India were on Wednesday redeemed uh, themselves with a 4-3 victory over Japan, hoping to enter the final of the Sultan Aslan Shah hockey tournament. It was a, it was a striker Mandeep Singh's a brilliant hat-trick in a round-robin tie that gave India a score of 4-3, having squandered the early lead provided by a penalty corner conversion from uh, Rupinder Pal Singh India were trailing when Mandeep got into his goal-scoring act in the second half. It needed two goals from Mandeep in the last 10 minutes to help India avoid a stunning loss. Now, Mandeep's uh, three goals uh, keeps India's challenge alive in the Six Nation tournament, taking them to seven points from four matches. The win gave India a chance of making uh, the second successive final in the Sultan Aslan Shah Cup after having finished runners-up behind Australia last year. And President Pranam Mukherjee on Wednesday presented the 64th National Film Awards uh, to the artists of the Indian film fraternity for their outstanding contribution to cinema. Among the most eminent recognition was the Dada Sahab Halke Award to director K. Vishwanath for the year 2016. It is the highest recognition in Indian cinema which consists of a golden lotus, a citation, cash price of uh, 10 lakh rupees and a shawl. Now, Bollywood actor Akshay Kumar was conferred the Best Actor Award for his role in the movie 
Rustam. Malayalam actress Surabhi was given a Best Actress for her role in uh, Minamin Untugu. The Best Hindi Film Award was conferred uh, to Sonam Kapoor starer Neerja. Marathi movie Kasav was directed by Sumitra Bhave and Sunil Suthankar received the Best Feature Film Award. Hindi film Dhanak, directed by Nagesh Kukunur, got the Best Children Film Award. Telugu movie Sathamanam Bhavati has been conferred the Best Popular Film, providing wholesome entertainment. The Best Film on the Social Issue was awarded to the movie Pink. Kashmiri actress Zara Wasim was given the Best Supporting Actress Award for her role in Dangal. Ajay Devgan's Shivai won the Special Effects Award. Actor Mohan Lal received the Special Jury Award. The Dargis Dutt Award went to Dikchao Bhanath Palaks. The Indira Gandhi Award was given to Alifa. Among various dignitaries present on the occasion were Union Minister M. Venkaya Naidu and Minister of State Rajivardhan Rathor. Indian film industries are full of diversities, but yet it conveys one message. That message is of universal brotherhood, tolerance, cooperation, coexistence, and essentially the message which the successful filmmakers have conveyed that we may be argumentative. That's all in this edition of news. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.